Satan Tango, or Satan's Tango as it's translated, that's, that's a very easy translation, is a seven and a half hour film considered to be one of the greatest movies of all time. Directed by Bella Tarr and released in 1994, the same year as other classics like Pulp Fiction and, um, uh, uh, blank check. Based on the 1985 novel by, um, yeah, there's no way I'm pronouncing it. Laszlo Krizna Horkai. It follows a small Hungarian village that's almost completely isolated from the outside world and how a series of events affects the various characters living within it. If you're wondering how any film can possibly be nearly eight hours long, it's largely due to the ultra-long takes that this film uses. While the entire film consists of only roughly 150 shots, these shots can last as long as 10 minutes, sometimes with minimal dialogue or really anything happening at all. Which could easily be seen as another, oh look, I filmed the Empire State Building for eight hours. Makes you think. But instead, this film introduces us to such an interesting, mysterious setting that after a point, these long takes become this hypnotizing form of immersion. You really feel like the world you're seeing is not only real, but you've transcended from being an observer to feeling like you're really there with the characters. Fortunately, I knew nothing about this going into the screening the other week, as the film has been restored for the first time in 4K and is currently being shown around my country. I was very curious to find out what a seven and a half hour film in a theater setting would feel like, and uh, what it feels like is uh, absolutely nuts. As they advertised on the theater's website, the film would be shown in three parts. The first part starting at 2 p.m. sharp and ending at 4.17, followed by a 10 minute intermission. Then the second part would start at 4.30 and end at 6.35 p.m., followed by a 45 minute intermission. And finally, part three would start at 7.30 and end at 10.30 p.m. Even if I lump together all the hectic midnight screenings and opening weekends for every blockbuster I've ever been to, this was easily one of the most insane viewing experiences of my life. Not because the movie was too boring or too long. To be honest, the pacing of this film is so good you don't even really feel the length till you're out of the theater and realize you've just spent an entire Sunday looking at mud. It's just nuts in the way that you sort of feel like you're coming up for air at just the perfect time. Something I haven't experienced since I saw Hateful Eight in theaters with that sweet, sweet, sweet intermission. Mm. The audience was also interesting to me. I was really curious what kind of people would come out to see such a long movie. For one thing that was kind of a little hilarious and also a little distracting about watching this with an audience was throughout the film during these insanely long takes, it is so quiet in the theater. I could hear everyone. This movie's sound is so atmospheric, you honestly forget that it's there sometimes. So every small sound, every squeak, every crunch carried like a gunshot. The dude with restless legs sitting two rows behind me sounded like he was right up in my ear. I could feel every thread, every Also, people kept getting up and changing their seats throughout the film. I must have seen like 10 people get up and move to different seats around the theater. And these weren't bathroom breaks either. They were just looking for better seats, but I don't know, man, you're watching a seven and a half hour film. It's gonna take a toll on your body no matter where you sit. All the seats suck, except my seat. I was over by the aisle and ooh, so perfect. The leg space, forget about it. But overall, honestly, the experience was amazing. The story the film tells is one that absolutely deserves the length. It's the longest movie I've ever seen. So in a way, I'm kind of hesitant to recommend it to most people because let's be honest, investing this kind of time into watching a film like this all in one day, it's kind of unrealistic. But I'm sure Bellatar was well aware of this once he passed the four hour mark in editing. Dude apparently wanted to show this movie with zero intermissions, so yeah, that should give you an idea what this guy's priorities were. Watching this movie is kind of like those Tough mutter outdoor events you see advertised where people are willingly paying money to just roll around in filth and essentially work out in insane conditions with other people. It may look completely crazy to all us normal people on the outside, but at the end of the day, they're the ones getting an experience they're never gonna forget. All I can really say about Zidane Tango is that it's absolutely worth your time if you got it. Who knows, maybe one day I'll do a Topher Grace style edit just for fun and see if I can whittle this baby down to, what, five hours? Or hell, just play the movie at 1.5 speed, you know? I don't see anything offensive about speeding up something that a lot of people worked really, really hard on to look a specific way. 